Hey guys, what's up? It's Drew here, and today I wanted to talk about the Vigilance Wing and the future of exotic weapons. Now, I think a lot of people have had the same thing on their mind. Vigilance Wing is really, really powerful post-update. It's one of my favorite weapons, it always has been, but now it's really, really consistent. But although strong, is it really overpowered? And that's what I'm here to talk about and analyze. And then furthermore, I wanted to talk about the future of exotics in Destiny 2. So let's get right into it. So I think that a lot of people tend to look at Vigilance Wing's optimal time to kill on paper, see those kind of numbers on the charts from Destiny Massive Breakdowns and other sources, and they see that 0.83 optimal time to kill. So looking at that compared to a lot of different weapons, you know, on initial glance, it probably seemed to be overpowered. A lot of people would claim it to be overpowered because of that, because that is significantly faster than most other weapons in the game, optimal time to kill. Now, just to state it, before we really get into it, yes, I think Vigilance Wing is an incredibly powerful weapon now. Yes, I think it is a half step above some other weapons, but I don't believe that this weapon is overpowered, and this is why. First and foremost, for that 0.83 second optimal time to kill, it requires at least 9 to 10 headshots, or better known as 2 bursts full of precision damage, which is unlikely to hit regularly. In most cases, you're not going to be regularly 2 bursting people because of the amount of precision it takes, and some other factors which I'll get into in just a moment. Another factor is that this is a 5 round burst pulse rifle, and now a 5 round burst is obviously longer than the standard 3 round burst, which means a few things. So number one, the burst takes more commitment, meaning once you fire it, you're fully committed to the burst until it finishes, and if you don't, if you kind of disengage or don't follow through that whole burst, you're significantly losing out on your damage output, based on the rate of fire being more in line with the high impact pulse rifles, but the damage output per bullet being a little more in line with the low impact rapid fire archetype. So again, if you don't fully commit to each burst and try and land the entire burst, you're really missing out on damage output. The longer 5 round burst though also means that you have far less of an opportunity to play in and out of cover because a longer burst requires you to be exposed for a longer period of time, unlike a hand cannon which can deal a pretty good amount of damage in a very short amount of time and other pulses that can deal a pretty good amount of damage per burst in a shorter amount of time because of a shorter burst. This is a big deal because any good players are going to be playing in and out of cover and playing in and out of cover Conversely, because you don't have the opportunity to do it, if someone does it against you, can completely demolish your time to kill. In this clip here, I was playing against Cami Cakes and Rumble, and he was using a 180 RPM hand cannon, and I was using Vigilance Wing. I was in plain sight, and he actively oh used his cover, and was really effective in limiting my damage output on him. So Vigilance Wing absolutely shreds targets in plain sight, but against the target that's using their cover effectively, it's a lot harder to be successful with. And because of the 5 round burst and having to expose yourself for longer, when using the Vigilance Wing, you can't really play cover as effectively. Now the second thing about a 5 round burst is I think that leading a 5 round burst is harder than the standard 3 round burst. A 5 round burst has a continuous recoil kick, so for each shot, you have to account for the recoil. And on top of it, because it's a longer burst, you have to keep your crosshairs over the target for the duration of the entire burst, which is longer, again, than the normal weapon, like a normal pulse rifle, or of course, longer than a hand cannon. So the continuous recoil for each burst makes it harder to keep your crosshairs on the target, which you need to do for a longer time already because of the duration of the burst. And of course, if you wanna get that quote unquote overpowered 0.83 optimal time to kill, you have to get all headshots while doing this. And now finally, with the new update and increased movement speed, this becomes even harder to do on a regular basis. This does all tie into how much commitment is required by each burst on this weapon, which I mentioned previously, but when shooting each burst, it's also harder to strafe unpredictably or slide into engagements or even jump because it has the potential to make your shots in your burst miss or become a lot more inaccurate. The most consistent way I've learned to use Vigilance Wing since release, I've been using this weapon quite often, is to compensate for recoil with my aim, in my case being the right stick because I play with controller, and then lead my bursts using my character's movement to make fine movements with my left stick, again since I'm on controller. So the 5 round burst and the commitment needed does limit and restrain your movement quite a bit in my opinion. So with those things said, I think 2 full bursts of precision damage is not all that likely or easy to do, 
And in the event that a player does that, I think it should definitely be rewarded with a fast time to kill like it does currently. Because if you miss even more than a single precision shot, you lose the opportunity for that really fast time to kill. So without hitting all precision, that 0.83 time to kill that you see on the spreadsheets is relatively meaningless. And hitting all precision is not going to happen the majority of the time. However, with 6 crit and 5 body shots, you can actually kill in a competitive 1.13 seconds which is actually pretty well in line with some other pulses. The adaptive pulses can kill in 1.07 seconds with 6 crit and 3 body, that's a few less body shots, and then rapid fire pulses kill in 1.07 seconds with 8 crit 3 body, taking a little bit more precision. Vigilance Wing can also kill in 3 crit 9 body for 1.2 seconds, which does pull ahead a bit in front of other pulses. The adaptive archetype would be 2 crit 8 body for a 1.4 second time to kill, which is slower. And the rapid fires take 50% critical rate at 6 crit 6 body for a 1.13 second time to kill. But V-Wing does stay in line with other high impact pulses. They take 3 crit 6 body to kill in 1.2 seconds, which is somewhat similar. The critical hit ratio for a 1.2 second time to kill is similar to adaptive and the high impact pulses. And considering the rapid fire pulses are far more forgiving for missing shots, the increased critical hit ratio I think balances them out in my opinion. I think what makes Vigilance Wing quite strong is the fact that it can hit a 1.33 second time to kill, which is normally the average or some optimal for some or most other weapons with no precision necessary. So 1.33 seconds with all body shots. I think this most of all shows us that sometimes good, which is the case here, a good average time to kill can turn out to be something really great simply because of how reliable and consistent it is. That being said, if you were to hit no precision shots and miss more than one to two bullets, your time to kill goes out the window as you'll have to fire another burst. So again, you can still ruin that 1.33 consistent time to kill with no headshots needed. So again, is this overpowered? I don't think so. But it does have a uniqueness and consistency that feels like a small step above other legendary and currently exotic weapons which in the long run feels like it makes a noticeable difference and again makes the vigilance wing quite powerful and this is where we lead into what i think is the future of exotic weapons in destiny 2. i believe bungie is balancing exotic weapons to be powerful and the vigilance wing is just a glimpse of what's to come i think it already got its quote-unquote exotic balancing or buff to put it in line with other exotic weapons through the pulse rifle buff that was mainly intended for other pulse rifles so basically, Vigilance Wing got its exotic balancing buff through this pulse rifle buff. The Vigilance Wing's model feels like a perfect model in my eyes for exotic weapons. The weapon's unique and has unique characteristics and curates a certain type of gameplay, and it offers an opportunity to get an extremely fast time to kill given you have complete precision, but still offers incredible consistency that puts it a step above other weapons. And I think this is what all exotics are soon to become, weapons that provide us the opportunity for skilled players to reach a very fast time to kill, but provide great consistency to put them a bit above the average weapon, all while preserving what makes the weapon unique. We can take a look at the clip shown of Sturm after the exotic balancing in the TWAB or this week at Bungie. It's another example of an exotic that seems to be following the same idea as Vigilant Swing. In the clip, Drang now has Rampage, which is a nice bonus because Drang pairs with Sturm. But with Drang kills, Sturm gets now an overcharge, and this seems to be the new element or mechanic of the exotic. The overcharge looks like it grants about a 1.8 times damage boost, as explained by Bungie, for the first shot of Sturm after getting a Drang kill. And this allows you to potentially get a 2 headshot kill in what might be around 0.7 to 0.8 seconds, which is pretty crazy, or just simply a 1 crit 2 body kill in 1.07 seconds, which is still pretty consistent and pretty good. Of course, this is in addition to the current system of the weapon where Drang reloads it and increases the damage of Sturm until Sturm is next reload and that enables two crit one body kills with Sturm. So with the exotic balancing, Sturm seems to be following suit of the Vigilance Wing by curating a specific unique playstyle, this is in swapping between Sturm and Drang, and providing the tools to allow for a very fast time to kill in the hands of a skilled player. And it seems like they've purposely made it more powerful than even Kill Clip for an exotic as it should be in my opinion. 
and it still provides consistency even beyond that just by being able to get one crit two body kills even if you miss the two tap the community has been asking for exotics that feel powerful and i think bungie is now delivering that and it's gonna be a lot of fun it doesn't seem like exotics will completely overpower legendaries but they will provide players with abilities that some legendary weapons simply can't. And I think these will be a part of every loadout now. As much as I might have limited experience compared to some others in the community with this time of destiny, I think this balancing will be similar to year one where Thorin, The Last Word, and Hawkmoon were a staple in most loadouts. And I think this is great because we'll see players become known for their skill and ability with their certain exotics and we'll see builds surrounding them, which is really awesome, I think. Now to go back to the beginning and talk about our initial question, is Vigilant Swing overpowered? I think it just got its balancing a little earlier than most exotics, and I think other exotics are definitely going to rival it. Another thing with exotics is Acrius is very very powerful as of now, and if other exotics rise to the same level as Acrius, well in turn Acrius kinda gets a nerf because it becomes a decision to make whether you want to use an exotic power weapon or just something more suitable for your neutral game. So I think we're headed in a pretty great direction. And no, I don't think Vigil and Swing is overpowered. I think we're just waiting a little bit on the other exotics to get brought up as well. Anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the analysis and the discussion. Definitely tell me your thoughts in the comments below. But before we end this off, we are still doing our giveaway of our Destiny logo emblem. I don't ever remember the name of this, I just call it that. And all you have to do is follow me on Twitch, leave your Twitch name as well as your gamer tag, your PSN or your Battle.net in the comments so I can contact you with the code for the emblem should you win. I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe and turn notifications on as well, but totally not part of it. So you don't have to if you don't want to, I would just appreciate it. But the main thing is just follow me on Twitch and leave your contact info in the comments. Anyways guys, thank you again so much for watching. It's been Drew here today and I'll catch you guys later.